Okay, welcome to another video that we're doing on Snowflake Database. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get, which is, how does my ETL change if I start using a, a, a cloud database like Snowflake? And so I uh, just wanted to cover that topic a little bit. This is probably going to be a two-parter just because there's, there's so much to cover here, but I just wanted to kind of cover the basics on a couple things that that you have to do to get it to work and it's all pretty easy and you know people say oh, what has to change and the answer is re really not much so i uh, just wanted to kind of kind of show that off here in this in this video so i've got a, a snowflake database here um, that i want to uh, uh, load with some data for example from like mysql and i have a mysql database out in in aws right now but here are the tables that I want to want to load, and they're all kind of empty right now, right? And so for this uh, demo here, I'm actually going to use Pentaho, which is an open source uh, BI tool here. Um, what I'm about to do will apply to you know Informatica, uh, you know Data Stage, uh, Snap Logic, other tools like that, right? And so what usually happens here is we've got this paradigm in ETL where we want to load data, and I, you know it's usually a very simple process here. Um, of of you know selecting data uh, you know making a connection to the source database here like I have a connection to a MySQL database and I can do a preview here of of the items in this table and if I do that uh, here's here's just some sampling of data and usually what you want to do then is is you know put that out into a you know a source database right here I've got a connection to Snowflake through a JDBC connection and you select the table and all that good stuff the problem is is that when we do something like this this kind of direct uh, load kind of paradigm in an MPP database it's it's unusably slow because it wants to do insert 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 line by line and if you've got a couple hundred records I guess it's okay but many of us don't right we've got you know larger and larger volumes of data and it's got to move fast and so uh, what we do in ETL I mean all your ETL is pretty much the same but we're gonna circumvent this process by do, ins instead doing a, a put and a copy statement to load data. And I did another video on this um, where we talk about you know pumping things out to just flat files, then moving them out into a, a user stage in Snowflake or maybe your own private S3 bucket, and then doing the copy, which uh, takes advantage of parallelization to actually load the data into the database. And we do the same the same thing here now, right? And so now let me just bring it back here. Um, so this is what we're going to do um, uh, uh, in the same way. So I'm going to um, do a couple things. So I'm going to select a little, uh, make a little hop here to say, hey, I'm going to take things um, uh, from my source database and I want to put them out to a table. Now, again, your your ETL processes and the things that you do to, to work on data can stay the same mostly, right? I can still do maybe in this step here, I want to first... Um, uh, sort the rows, right? I want to do a sort here. Let me just uh, make sure this step is all cool here. Just get the fields and uh, actually, uh, let me do this. Uh, I'm just going to select the fields that I want to sort on and I'll say one will be uh, the week date field and then I also want to sort it on maybe the movement type ID, right? Of course, when I sort the data, I get better compression. So I'll do something like that. Uh, it's going to do that in memory. And then maybe I want to do something like uh, add a select fields in here just because I want to change the, um, you know, the format of the date type maybe, right? And so I can do something like, you know, uh, get all these fields in here. And then on some metadata field, I want the, uh, let's just say here, the week date field. Let's say that it's, you know, we're going to tell it that, hey, by the way, it's, it's a timestamp field. And its uh, format will be something like this. It'll be something like, you know, YYY, uh, MM, DD, uh, and then hour, minute, and second, something like that. Say OK. So, you know, I can do, the, the point is I can do whatever I want in terms of ETL here, uh, you know, to, to get my ready uh, my data ready here, right? So I'm going to do all that and I'm going to pump it out to a flat file. Now, in this step, what I'm doing here is I'm just saying, hey, you know, take my data from my source system and put it out into a file. And in, But in this case, I'm saying, you know, put it out into a CSV. And oh, by the way, because there might be a lot of data in here, you know, this one's going to be a, a pipe separated 
uh, you know, I'm going to add a header. I'm going to add a line feed. I'm going to gzip this. Uh, make sure there's no fat, uh, no no formatting, so that it pumps out fast. But I'm also going to split this and say, you know, this million records, I'm going to split every 200,000 records, put it into a new file. The reason I'm doing that, and I didn't have to do it for a million records. It's kind of small here, right? But but you know, we're talking about huge volumes of data. You want to split things. And so here's a way to actually do that. And Pintao gives me a nice way to do that. And so when I select OK here, um, what's going to happen now is I'm going to run this. And what we'll see is in my local system here, um, I'm going to see this the, these files starting to be created here. And so right now it's actually doing all the sorting of the data. Uh, again, so I'll, I should get better compression Usually I get 11, uh, 11 meg on this uh, per file here. Uh, so we'll see. So that part's done. Now it's going to start pumping data out here. So uh, let's just see here. Here we go. Now I can see the the files being pumped out here, right? One, two, three. Here comes the fourth one. And then the fifth one. There we go. So I now moved all of my data out to a flat file, right? And that's that's all done here. And that process is complete. Right. And then the same thing can happen. You know, that's for when you have big fact tables and whatnot. Um, you know, obviously, when I've got smaller little dimensions and I want to use an ETL tool to just bring stuff over in mass here, I've got, you know, I'm taking, you know, getting sources uh, uh, set up here where I select data from my source, pump it back out to a zipped up uh, flat file. I can run this. This one will run super fast, too. In fact, when I look here now, look, all these files are, are put out over here. OK, so again, all I've done here so far in, in this ETL process is, you know, take data from the source and put it out into flat files. Now I want to put and copy to load the database. Right. And again, I can do this in an ETL tool very simply. So if I go to this other transformation step that I have, um, here's exactly what I'm doing. So I just have two little steps where I call a SQL statement and making a connection to Snowflake here through a JDBC connection. And what I'm doing is I'm going to just put those files that I just created. I'm going to put them out into my Snowflake user stage into a MySQL file here, or MySQL directory. Uh, and then after that, it's going to load the actual data with a series of copy statements. And again, it's a small data set that I have here across all of this. My biggest table is 1 million records. And it'll load pretty pretty much instantaneously. But it's going to have to you know, uh, go across all these different ones here. So uh, if I just run this now, I'll just launch this step. And this is, this is starting here. And I can see this actually working. So if I go back to my database, go to my worksheet, and if I did a list here, I can see that I've got, you know, here's one file that's already being put out here. And if I run this again in just a second, see there's more files being put out here. It's not going to take long to get these 15 files out here. Let me just do it again here. We'll do, I'm doing this in real time. I'm not going to edit this, this video at all. There's the 8. I'd imagine we're close to being done here. There's the 13. I think there's two more files. I'm just listing that directory that it's that it's loading up here with those files. There's the 15 and they're out here. Now it's going to move on to the next step, I believe, which is, yeah, it's done there. So now it's actually doing the load. And when I look at my database now, I can see that uh, there we go. So there's the million. I've already started loading some of this. I'll refresh it again. Here we go. It's loading all the data right now. Right. And so there we have it. And that's a simple a simple migration. But the idea here is, again, um, let me just see here. These, these should be done relatively quick. I think there's two more. There we go. There's one more. I think this other file has, uh, this other table has just seven records too. There we go. We're complete. And there it is. It's all, it's all done here. So I did it in the ETL process just so I can kind of manage the flow of things, right? And I can certainly add error handling and all that kind of good stuff in here too. But basically every ETL tool is going to, going to do this. Now, some ETL tools like Informatica and Talend are working on, in, in the case of Informatica, they've created a native connector for Snowflake where it's actually doing this put and copy process for us so you can in fact actually do this type of thing where i can select data right from a source and just go right to an output step where it's actually going to do all of this stuff for me over here right all these all these puts and all of these copy statements right it'll do that for us which is really nice but in the in the absence of that that's all you really have to change in your etl process here right 
Um, the other thing, so so that's kind of you know a migration thing happening there. The other thing that happens too is we talk about well, how do I do incrementals, right? And and again, I encourage people to say, listen, you know, get your data, you know, uh, take it out of the source, do what you need to do to it your increment with your incremental data, you know, put it out there, and once it's staged now and and put up into um, the Snowflake database, now I can start doing merges, right? So I know, for example, in my in my database here, I have a movement table, which just has nine records in it, and it's the exact format of this movement fact table. Um, so if I do something like this and just say, uh, uh, select star from movement, I believe what I'll see here is just nine records, and really what's happening here is I made this so that there would be one, two, three, four, five, six new records, and then I took three old records that I had here. Um, the, these should perform updates and I'm just doing a merge statement so it's more set based right and so within my ETL tool I just created a little script here that's going to do the merge statement for us to do our upserts uh, I'm not going to get into what upserts are here just you probably know what that is already and so again in my ETL process I'm going to call that I'm going to launch that and it's not going to take very long for this to actually just run here um, and there it is I got the green arrow that it's it's actually done and in fact, when I look at the history uh, in my database in Snowflake right now, I can see that I just did that merge statement just now. Um, in fact, let me look, look at the query ID, and I can see there's my six rows that were inserted and my three rows that were updated. So again, the, the name of the game here is um, you know, your ETL. You're still going to do ETL like you've always been doing it. The only difference is, is that instead of, a, um, instead of a process where I'm putting it directly to uh, a table, I'm going to do this kind of uh, two-step process of pumping things out to flat files and then uh, calling uh, a put and load statement to to actually load the data. So hope that was hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm probably going to do another video on this uh, as other things come up. I might do one on, on type 2 dimensions and how I handle that too. Um, a couple ways to uh, to approach that. But hope you found this useful and um, we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot.